Hello aspiring students, welcome back to Legalopolis. Today we are diving into the exciting world of F1 visa interviews. Join me as we decode common questions and master the art of presenting our best self and best answers to the counselor officer during the interview process. I have prepared a comprehensive video on F1 student visa and I would highly recommend that to you so that you can have a look at it to get some more clarity before you begin your F1 visa application. Now friends, you might be wondering why an interview is necessary even after receiving acceptance from a US university. Well, that's because Section 214B of the US Immigration and Nationality Act presumes that every visa applicant is an immigrant until they establish to the satisfaction of the counselor officer that they are entitled to a non-immigrant status. Therefore, during the F1 visa interview, the responsibility lies with you to demonstrate to the consular officer about your intent to travel to the United States solely for the purpose of studies and number two, your intent to return back to your home country after your studies. And in order to ascertain this, the counselor officer will ask you a few questions which will broadly fall in one of these categories. Number one, program of study. Number two, institution and course choices. Number three, your academic background. Number four, your financial capacity. Number five, your ties to home country and your intent to return. Number six, your English proficiency. Number seven, your immigration history and number eight, security and health. They use these parameters to finally decide your eligibility. Now friends, before we get into the process of preparing answers, it's important for you to understand your academic and financial situation with clarity. And how will we do that? So let's grab a paper and pen and create a general overview considering the following factors. Number one, university ranking or prestige. Try to evaluate the reputation of the university where you are considering to apply or go for your higher education. Number two, on the basis of the financial aid package or scholarships that you might have received. Number three, your own financial capacity to cover education costs. And number four, analyze how the chosen course aligns with your career or future objectives. Now friends, by evaluating these aspects, you'll gain a clear picture of your situation. It might reveal scenarios where you have a top-notch major in a lower ranked college with limited financial support, or perhaps you're financially well off, but the college doesn't rank as high. In some cases, both the college and financial aspects are strong, while in others, both may be less than ideal for you. So what this assessment does is that it provides you a very, very real perspective and helps you understand your specific situation to understand what are the strengths and weaknesses of your application. And once you know that, it'll be easy for you to frame your interview answers to address their strengths and weaknesses with clarity. Now friends, the most important thing in any interview, not just visa interview, is that you do not memorize your answers. And that's only possible when you have good clarity as regards your situation. And this assessment will help you to not just prepare for the answers, but also will make you mentally prepared for the time of the interview so you don't have to memorize the answers. Rather, you will be in a position to handle any question that is put forward to you. Friends, now let's prepare for the interview. Normally, the first question at any visa interview is related to the purpose of your visit. Why do you want to visit the United States? And for an F1 visa, there are two main keywords, academic studies and full-time student. So here, your purpose is to visit the United States to attend a certain college or university to pursue academic studies as a full time student. Keeping this as base, 
you can easily frame your answer. For example, I want to travel to the United States to pursue my master's degree in biochemistry from Harvard University. Or, I want to travel to United States to attend undergraduate program in computer science at University of California, Los Angeles in the United States as a full-time student. Now friends, here is my tip. Whenever you tell the name of a university, please do not use abbreviations like UIUC, UCLA. Instead, please use full forms. Now here the counselor officer might ask, do you have any proof? And in response, please carry and provide the acceptance letter from the university you wish to attend. And if they haven't asked for your I-20 and DS-160, be prepared to provide these documents as well. Let's go to the second question. Why did you decide to go to this specific school? Now this is your personal space. Each and every one of you will have their own reasons for going to a certain university. Avoid stating facts to answer this question because facts can give you a perspective but your reason to visit a university will be more specific than just facts. Now let me remind you of the time when you were applying to these universities in the United States and you had to answer the question, why us, in the essays or during your interview. Here you never talked about how old, prestigious these universities are. They know that they are very good universities and colleges and we do not need to elaborate on that. Therefore, please keep this in mind while preparing the answers to this question. Please remember, make your answers genuine and personal and should not be a verbatim of data analytics. Please avoid generic statements like it's a prestigious university, it has a diverse student body, it's an old university, it has a huge campus. All of these are absolutely no goals. Here you must mention specific reasons for choosing this university or college for your undergraduate or graduate studies. The best reasons are the most personal ones. I'm sharing some examples with you. One could be if your sibling or a relative studied from the same university and inspired you to go there because they have excellent programs or you met with an alumni with whom you discussed who gave you some inputs and you were impressed about the university's academic offerings. Or, in case you visited the campus either in person or through virtual tours and connected with a current student, you could share a personal experience if you think it strengthens your answer. Or, your reason could be purely financial. If you received scholarship from a particular college, you could say, I received acceptances from quite a few colleges or universities for the same major and all of them have good academic standing. But I chose this university finally because this university offered me a good financial aid package, which is a very genuine reason to go to that university. You save so much money. Or you could say, I got admitted to the honors college within that university and therefore I chose this university. Or you could mention some very unique experience that you will get at that university which makes that university stand apart from the rest of the universities. And if that's your main reason, go ahead with it. You could also mention some specific courses or specific research happening under a professor that interests you. But this must be related to your field of study and try to link this research to your long-term goals. You could say things like, I believe that so-and-so academic programs and research opportunities at this college will provide me with the necessary knowledge and skills to excel in my chosen field. My goal is to use this knowledge and experience gained during my studies in the US to further my career after I go back to my home country. But please remember, this could be a very small part of your answer, not the main reason. The main reason should be a personal reason. It is not necessary that it must be a very spectacular or a exceptional reason. It can be a small reason, but it must mean something to you. Remember, when you have a genuine personal reason, 
you won't need to memorize it and the reason will come out naturally the visa officers are very experienced and can see through you they can easily understand if your reason is genuine or made up or memorized so friends here's another quick tip please make sure that you thoroughly research the college or university that you are planning to attend the reason being that visa officer would like to understand if you genuinely have an interest in studying at the university by asking you specific information about that college this will help them understand if you genuinely want to attend the college for the joy of learning or you want to use this as an opportunity to immigrate to the united states then comes question number 3 why do you want to study in the united states or why don't you study this course in your home country or why not any other country why united states or why are you planning to continue your education in the united states now friends this is a very important question this question would definitely be asked the aim of this question is to understand how much you can understand the american education system and if you have any specific and genuine reason to leave the comforts of your home country to live and study in the united states which by the way is not cheap friends this is a personal question and each and every one of you will have a different answer but here are my few tips number 1 firstly choose specific and meaningful reasons for your intent to study in the united states avoid generic statements like you want to experience american culture or get a good education these reasons lack specificity they fail to illustrate strong connection to your personal and academic goals your responses must be tailored about what is special about us education system that draws your attention to it it should be brief not long one short sentence would be enough then mention something tailored to your intended field of study in the united states here you must emphasize how the program uniquely addresses specific educational needs crucial for your career advancement for instance us schools are recognized for combining theoretical knowledge and practical skills the excellent research opportunities with students from around the world promises an unparalleled learning experience you could also contrast it with what is specifically not available in your home country for example the integration of theoretical knowledge and practical skills along with diverse research opportunities provides an unmatched hands-on learning experience something that is not available in my home country you could also discuss the post completion impact of a us degree by highlighting the excellent reputation and global recognition of us degrees opening many doors of opportunities for you in future the most important thing here is make sure to mention that your intent is to acquire this knowledge and experience and then come back to your home country and use it for your professional growth or contribute something positive for the betterment of your society so try to link your educational aspirations with long term intent of doing good work in your home country then comes the next question generally they would like to know how many colleges did you apply to could you name them and here you can answer the question honestly i applied to 5 6 7 whatever is the number of colleges you applied to and tell the names of these colleges where you have applied now friends please be very honest here because these facts can be easily cross checked so try to be as close to truth as possible question number 5 how many schools or colleges did you get admitted to here also it's a factual question i got admitted in these many schools now as a proof try to carry acceptance letters from the colleges that you got admitted into in case the visa officer is curious and wants to have a look at them or they could ask how many schools rejected you here you must also mention very clearly that i was rejected by these many schools or colleges or i was denied admission by these colleges or i was deferred admission by these colleges now friends here are my two cents 
If you, for example, applied to five colleges and got rejected from four, don't worry. This will not jeopardize your chances of getting a visa. As long as you have an I-20 from US University, that is all that is needed for you to get an F-1 visa. And therefore, please try to be as honest and close to truth as possible. Next question. They could ask you, why did you apply to so many universities? Now, the reason to ask this question is to understand whether you applied to these universities so that you could enter the US in any possible way or if you have a genuine reason for the same. Here, applying to universities of good repute and ranking will come in handy to show your genuine interest of coming to the United States for gaining knowledge and not with an immigrating intent. Here you can mention the number and the name of universities you applied to and explain the ground based on which you applied to them. For example, if they all have a good liberal arts department, then that is the reason why you applied to all these universities, right? They would definitely like to know, have you ever been to the United States before? If you've been to the United States, you can simply say, yes, I have been to the US before. And if not, you simply say, no, I have never been to the United States before. They would also like to inquire if you know in which city is your university located and do you have any idea about the local area around your university? Now here you must mention simply that my university is located in this city, in this state and I have done some research about the local area. I am aware of the general cost of living and basic amenities in and around the university. However, I am still exploring specific details and look forward to further exploring the local community while studying at the university. Question number 10. Here they could ask you, which degree are you planning on studying? So please mention, for example, I will be pursuing bachelors in computer sciences or I will be pursuing chemical engineering or I will be pursuing business administration or I will be pursuing medical sciences. What subjects will you be studying in your first year or say first trimester or first semester? They might ask this question. So here it's very important that you have a clear idea about the length of your studies and the subjects that you will be learning. For example, if you are pursuing chemical engineering, you could say in our first year we will be learning introduction to chemical engineering, calculus, chemistry, physics for engineering and computer programming. So friends, it's important here to show your awareness about the academic program at the university because it is this knowledge which will showcase your genuine interest and awareness about the academic study program and also will show an excitement in you towards attending the college and studying the major that you chose. They could also ask you, can you tell us the name of some professors you are in contact with from US University? Now here you can mention the name and department of professors with whom you might be in touch. You could say, I have been in contact with Professor this and this from this department at the university. And as a proof, if you have some emails through which you have, and as a proof, if you have some emails that you've exchanged with them, please carry a copy of that as well. The next question could be, how long are you planning to be in the United States? The general answer would be, I will be in the United States for the duration of my academic program, which is, it could be two years, it could be four years, whatever is the duration, please mention that. And after that, I intend to go back to my home country and use this knowledge to further grow my career. The next question could be, what will be your specialization from your degree? And here you you could simply answer, for example, after the completion of my academic studies, I will specialize in data science, data analytics, microbiology, linguistics, robotics, cyber law, etc. They could also ask, do you know your high school GPA 
or undergraduate academic GPA or percentage. Now here you can say my high school GPA was this or my undergraduate GPA or percentage was this or I passed my high school or undergraduate studies with this GPA or percentage. So you can choose whatever sentence or whichever way you would like to say it. And as a proof, please carry your high school transcripts, your college transcripts and certificate of training or any other certifications that you might have done. Then comes the next question. In what year did you get your high school or bachelor's degree and from which school or university? So you could answer on the lines like for my high school education I attended and graduated from this school in this year or for my bachelor's degree or undergraduate degree I attended and graduated from this college in this year and my field of study was say engineering. So you can choose whatever situation applies to you and answer the question accordingly. And here also in case the visa officer is curious to know how authentic are your answers she might ask you to show high school transcripts or your college degrees so please make sure that you carry them as proof then comes the next question they can always ask you a very generic question tell me more about your academic background and how do we answer this question now in this situation you will generally say a brief summary of what you have studied or completed till now. For example, I have completed my high school education and I am now eagerly looking forward to pursuing my undergraduate studies at this university. Or I have completed my undergraduate studies in this subject from this college in this year and I am looking forward to my graduate studies at this university in the United States. And as a proof, you could always carry your resume where all your academic achievements could be seen in one page and carry your college and university degree, your high school transcripts and also certificate of any training or certifications that you might have done. Then comes the next question and the next question is what do you do currently? They would be very interested in knowing what are you doing now? And here you can simply say, if you're just a high school pass out, you could say, I have successfully completed my high school education and I'm currently awaiting admission to university. Or if you've just concluded your undergraduate studies, you could say that you have finished your undergraduate studies and now want to embark on the next phase of your academic journey by pursuing graduate studies in the United States. Or if you are employed you could always say I am presently employed and work as whatever is a designation in this company. I am interested in pursuing masters in this area to enhance my knowledge and upskill myself to take a bigger role and responsibility in my company. Now here please carry a proof of your high school transcript or your college degree or your resume and maybe a letter of employment from your employer proving that you are actually working in a company. Or they could ask you, what are your test scores? And you could say, I scored these many marks in SAT. For example, I scored a 1500 in SAT or a 1590 in SAT. So whatever are the marks that you scored in these exams, Please mention them clearly and honestly to the visa officer. And as a proof, make sure to carry a printout of your SAT, TOEFL, GRE results along with you and also carry your resume to be on the safer side. Then comes the next question. If you are leaving your job and going to study abroad, they would like to know why do you plan to leave your current job in order to go abroad and study? And the answer to this question would be, I'm currently working as this in this company and I decide to leave my job to pursue higher education because I believe that acquiring an advanced degree in this field will not only enhance my skills and knowledge, but also help me acquire better career prospects 
and help me grow and become successful in my professional career. Or you could say that you would like to use this knowledge and contribute and bring about a positive change in the development of your society or your country. Then comes the next question, which is very important. Who is paying for your education? Now friends, if your parents are paying for your education, you would say my education will primarily be funded by my parents. They have a good amount of savings that they will use to fund my education. Or if you have a scholarship, you could say, I have a financial aid package from the university. Most of my expenses will be covered through that and the remaining will be funded by my parents. Or I have a bank balance of these many dollars and I will be able to fund my education all by myself. Or I have taken a loan of these many dollars from this bank and through this loan, I will be able to fund my education. So these are some of the answers that you might give. And in order to carry a proof of what you are saying, you could carry bank statements, salary slips, certified tax returns of yourself or your parents or whoever is funding your education. Then comes the next question. How will your parents be able to pay for it? What is their professional background? Now here they would like to know whether your parents have genuinely have money to support you. And here you could answer on the lines like my parents have substantial savings as a result of this stable professional backgrounds. My father works as this and my mother works as this and we have a regular income flow that can support my education. And as a proof, you could carry bank statements, salary slips, certified tax returns of your parents and also proof of employment of your parents. Then comes the next question. Or they might ask you, how much do your parents earn? What is their annual income? Make sure that you are aware of the finances of your parents. Or they could ask you, what is the monthly income of the person who is going to sponsor your studies in case that person is not your parent? So it could be your grandparents, it could be your uncle, your aunt, your brother, your sister. Whosoever is sponsoring your education, make sure that you are aware of who's doing it and you have a good understanding of their monthly income. And as a proof, make sure to carry bank statements, salary slips and certified tax returns of the person who's paying for your education. Then comes the next question. The counsellor officer might also ask, how much does your university cost for a year? That is, what is the annual fee of your university? And here, you have to be aware of what are the charges of your university. So the annual cost of attending the university, including tuition and living expenses, is these many dollars. So make sure that you are aware of what is the fee structure of your university. Then comes the next question. If you are planning to stay for two or three years, how will you finance your education and your living? That's a practical question, that you are in a country where you don't have your parents to support you. They are supporting you from another country. Now, how will you support yourself if you're going to stay there for such a long time? So now, if you have financial aid, you could say, that my financial aid of these many dollars will be able to cover most of my expenses and the remaining will be covered by my parents or my spouse or myself. I would also like to explore on-campus work opportunities to generate some income. Or if your parents are funding your education, you can simply say, my parents will fund my education for the entire duration of stay. I would also like to explore on-campus work opportunities to supplement my income. Then we come to the next question that the counselor officer might ask. Do you have any relatives or friends currently in the United States? Please say a yes you have and no if you don't. And they would also like to know if you have family in the United States 
where do they live and what do they do for a living so you could answer by saying my grandparents or my brother or my sister they live in this city in this country and what do they do for a living make sure you have clear understanding about what job they do what is their source of income how much is their income and try to carry certified copies of their tax returns and maybe a few bank statements then comes the next question what are your plans after graduation this is a very important question they would want to know what you would like to do after your education so here you can say after my graduation i would like to go back to my country and use this experience to make meaningful contributions towards the growth of my professional career and we come to the last question are you sure you don't want to stay in the united states and here you could mention that yes i'm sure because i wanted to come to the us to upgrade my skills through my education and thereafter return to my home country where my family my parents or my spouse etc are there and i would like to apply this knowledge and the skills i acquire here to enhance my career prospects back home you could also mention that the degree from united states is globally recognized and respected and you feel that it will provide you a lot of help in securing a more rewarding job and a competitive salary in your own home country where you intend to live and contribute professionally after your studies so friends it is important to remember please do not provide exact memorized answers to the visa officer each and every one of you have a unique situation and your own personal reasons for studying in the united states especially as regards the field of study or the major that you have chosen to study so friends i hope you will remember to avoid memorization focus on grasping and understanding your situation so that you can confidently face any questions the visa officer might ask always remember there are no right or wrong answers just be clear specific genuine and honest ensure that your responses are factually correct and maintain a pleasant demeanor throughout the interview don't be nervous you've got this so friends i wish you all the very best and may your application for f1 visa be met with success safe travels